The biggest civil uprising in the history of the Turkish Republic kicked off in Istanbul at 5 a.m. on Friday, May 31st. Turkish media downplayed the protests as the unrest spread like wildfire across more than 60 cities. The footage showing police brutality against protesters shocked viewers around the world. So far, more than 4,000 people have been injured and three deaths have been confirmed. It all started when Turkish riot police fired tear gas, pepper spray and water cannons into a peaceful protest to save Gezi Park, one of the last green areas in central Istanbul. Instead of dispersing the protesters, the violent crackdowns resulted in the social uprising growing in strength and numbers, as discontent with Prime Minister Erdogan's autocratic style and Islamic agenda hit boiling point. Upon landing in Istanbul, we jumped in a cab to see what was going down in Taksim. Traffic was stopped, so we were dropped off in Shihangir, a 10-minute walk away from Taksim Square. The closer we got to the heart of the turmoil, the more injured and traumatized people we met. What's happened? The tear gas bullet hit his face. They are targeting people with those tear capsules. That's the problem. They use them as bullets. Young people dying, man. They just big politician, but these people's, our country's people's. Bu akan bizim kanımız ya, bizim kanımız. Bu akan kan bizim kanımız. Lots of people are coming now from the square. There's been tear gas fired all day, water cannons, pepper spray. Biz sadece parkın ve bu e, insani yaşamı savunuyorduk. Ama onların yaptıkları, biz yürürken şu şekilde kolumuzda biber gaz bombası fırlatmak, halkın ortasına e, tomalarla girmek. Yani şöyle diyebilirim ki bu başbakan kendi halkına savaş açmıştır. Ve bunu bütün dünya görmeli. Helicopters everywhere, police sirens, and despite people running away from this, the square, being injured, people seem to still be going. Um, God, I can smell the tear gas now. Okay, let's do this. When we finally reached Istiklal Avenue, just up Taksim Square, tens of thousands of protesters were trying to break the police barricades to take back the square. We're being tear gassed. We hid upstairs in a bar for hours. Hide your camera, don't use your light. The chemical oh. fumes were burning our eyes and lungs. Are we safe here? That's all. We had no idea what was happening outside. We just ran into a bar. There's tear gas everywhere. We saw lots of people just passing, falling, crying. The streets are empty now. There were thousands and thousands of people. Just a few minutes ago, I can feel that something really bad is happening. The following day, protesters were back out on the streets in even stronger numbers. The police continued to tear gas them, even in a residential area where there were three hospitals. In the afternoon, the police withdrew and people went back to the square. We wanted to speak to the people who first initiated the protests. So we tracked down two very tired members of the Gezi Park Protection and Beautification NGO, who had been occupying the park since Monday. So you have actually been out protesting for almost an entire week now? Yeah, well actually we had just finished our meeting on our way back home. We saw the demolition and this is how we 
we were able to stop it. How come you started focusing on Gezi Park? Why did you want to protect this green area? Actually, we were all fighting against the Taksim project, but we couldn't stop the tunnels and things like that. Then we said, OK, let's focus on the park because uh, it unifies people easily. That represents the last gifts of earth and nature that we have to protect as a um, treasure for our children and next generations. At sunset, one of our camera guys was in Besiktas, an area near Taksim, where major clashes kicked off between police and protesters, near Erdogan's Istanbul office. We headed to Taksim Square to see if the police were going to storm it once again. We're in Taksim Square, the heart of the protests in Istanbul, and people are partying despite having been tear gassed for two days and brutally attacked by police. And it's kind of amazing how many people are here, despite all the rumors that police from all over Turkey are here to basically attack the square in God knows how soon. <laughs> Do you think it's going to get worse than yesterday? Are you afraid of what's going to happen tonight? I mean, you've been tear gassed for two days now and attacked. We, we, we don't afraid for for anything. Yeah. We don't afraid. Uh, I, I am Kurdish. Uh, this is uh, human rights. Uh, because of human rights. We, we are ready for everything. So you're going to stay on this square no yeah, matter what? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we, we, are, uh, we, we, will, uh, we will wait uh, at here at Taksim. We, uh, we, don't, we don't give Taksim to the Recep Tayyip Erdogan. We just went and got gas masks. There are lots of rumors floating around about all sorts of things, but... Right now, we're gonna go to a meeting with some protesters, trying to figure out what exactly is going on and hopefully figure out what the plan is tonight. How did you find out that things were kicking off? I, for myself, saw what was happening on Facebook and Twitter. I was at work, and I, at 5.30, I left work, and I went directly to talk to him. Police came with tear gases and sprayed sleeping people and people who were reading books with um, tear gas, and they burnt their tents down, like actual live fire. One of the PMs of Turkish parliament got shot in the shoulder, with a tear gas canister, and then he was hospitalized. At that point, it was no longer about trees. It was just about tyranny. Eğer olay miting yapmaksa, eğer bu noktada toplumsal hareketse, yani ben kalkarım, onun 20 topladığı yerde 200 bin toplarım. Onun 100 bin topladığı yerde ben partim olarak 1 milyon insan toplarım. This is an official threat from our prime minister. I didn't vote for him doesn't matter, the majority voted for him, he's my prime minister too. And it's his duty, unforgettable and obviously to protect me as well. I, as a citizen of this country, do not feel safe to live here anymore. Like yesterday, around noontime, when the protests weren't so bloody, we saw this canister, twice the size of a regular grenade, and it says it should not be used on humans. And um, yeah, there was this doctor saying that they're using nine different varieties because they all have different remedies. And one of them, if you like drink water with it, it will burn more. But one of them, you have to drink water because otherwise there's no remedy to it. And one of them, you have to use vinegar and the other one, you have to use an anti-acid. It feels like you're drowning. Like, it feels like somebody's actually holding their hands on your throat and they're trying to kill you. This is a chemical war. This is against like human rights. We have grown up in a free country. We have gone to schools that provide us education in our own language. We were free to practice our own religion. We were free to be gays or lesbians or 
Kurds or Armenians, and we were free to respect each other. But now we're being forced to take sides. And this is the biggest, biggest damage the government has done to us. By midnight, clashes in Besiktas had gotten extremely violent and didn't die out until 2 a.m. I am in Besiktas, and in Besiktas I am near the stadium. Well, how are you going to come here? How many people are injured in the mosque? Uh, well, now, while you, I was talking to you, I was someone who came injured in Dubai, and somebody else is coming now. Uh, and I was basically dead. Uh, probably the gas came into the eye. Okay. Uh, directly in the capsule. Uh, it's going to be harsh. The faculty is the deal. We wrote our names and blood types on our arms because we don't know what would be going on for today, so we want to be safe in a hospital, in a government hospital, and etc. That's why we need that one. We heard there were six civilian medical points around Taksim, so we went to visit one of them. Are you a doctor? Yeah, uh, doctors and medical students, so we are here. Are there a lot of people coming into your emergency uh, clinic? Yesterday there were approximately 500 people. 500? 500 people, yeah. And some of them, they were badly hurt. And the police just didn't let ambulance to reach us for these uh, hurt people. So we had to carry these people with our arm powers. So it, it was just like hell yesterday. You hear lots of apparently tear gas being shot and it sounds like things are really kicking off there. Has it been like this all day? Yeah, it, it was. Yeah? All, all, all day long. Okay. He's going for an emergency. What are you expecting tonight? We expect that things will get worse. God knows what awaits us. Yeah, we've heard that police from all over Turkey has come to Istanbul yeah. now. Also tear gas from all over Turkey yeah. has come to Istanbul. Oh my god. So we're at Taksim Square, it's almost 2 a.m. People are building barricades to keep the police out, or try to. You can see fire. I think 150,000 people can fit on this square and it looks way more crowded than that. Can't believe how brave they are after all the news of what's happening in Besiktas. You eat your muscle? Yeah, I'll have a muscle. <laughs> we were so sketched out about coming to the square, and now people are just feeding us muscles, which feels a bit random, but it's nice. On the third day of riots shaking the country, the people had taken back Taksim Square, which was now the scene for a massive street party. The park was still standing, and the bulldozers and diggers that were sent to flatten it had been destroyed. This area has been a really important monument of civil society in Turkey ever since the 60s. This is where people come to protest, so obviously they don't want this place to get destroyed. <laughs> We left the celebrations to meet the MP who had become a national hero. We're on our way to meet Sire Sarya Under, the MP who stood in front of the bulldozers when they tried to destroy Gezi Park the other day. Um, and he was reportedly hit by a tear gas cartridge and hospitalized later on. 
Kepçenin önüne atladığımda bunun birçok insanı dikkatini çekeceğini düşünmüştüm. Yapılan iş e, illegaldı. Bu belgeleri getirirlerse dozerin önünden ancak o şartla ayrılacağımı söyledim. E, o belgeleri getiremediler. Ben de dozerin önünden çekilmedim ve e, meydana gittim. Artık e, yüz binlerce insan oraya gelmişti ve bu e, yıkım durduruldu. İlk defa insanlar çok farklı düşüncede olan ve hükümetin bu e, hegemonik yaklaşımından, kibirli yaklaşımından e, bıkmış insanlar, e, normalde de bir araya gelemeyecek insanlar bir araya geldiler. Epeydir Türkiye'de toplumsal muhalefet de bastırılmıştı. Böylece bu onlara normal gelmeye başlamıştı. Şimdi bu büyü bozuldu. Celebrations continued throughout the evening in Taksim. Football fans were joyriding a digger in Beşiktaş. By this time, 1,700 protesters across Turkey had been arrested. It was time for us to leave. On our way out, we stopped by Taksim Square. So it's 1 a.m. on Monday morning. The police have tonight again been brutally clamping down on protesters in Beşiktaş. There are a lot of people hurt. People are building massive barricades to basically prevent police coming back into Taksim Square. It's been about a week since the first people stood over there by the trees in Gessi Park trying to prevent them from getting destroyed by bulldozers. The square is the emptiest I've seen it so far. It could very well be because it's Monday morning and people need to go to work tomorrow. Do you know Toma devices? No. Toma vehicles? Yeah. Uh, so much water war. There. This yeah. is against them. Do you think they will come tonight? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe tonight or tomorrow, doesn't matter. Mm. So these will stay.